Hey guys, uh, hopefully this will wrap up the TV chassis, at least for now. Um, so when we last left off, I had done an alignment picture go. <clears throat> hey guys, hopefully I'll be wrapping up the TV in this installment, at least as best I am able. So in the last installment, I did an alignment, and the picture's looking really good. Uh, sound is a little goofy when I use this converter box, but it seems really clean with other sources, so I think that is the problem. So we're going to try using different video sources in this installment. And then there's the last real issue, which is focus. This is a focus coil. It's an electromagnet around the neck of the CRT. It kind of, you can think of it as a the magnetic fields kind of squeeze the electron beam into a tight, uh, tightly focused beam that goes to the front of the screen. Uh, it's not working so well. I've got the focus control all the way to one extreme to get it to be kind of good. It's almost there. But I would really like it to be best when it's in the center of its rotation. Now, there are some physical adjustments. Uh, it's mainly for centering the screen. There's a screw and a spring on every corner of this electromagnet on this metal plate. It seems to be better focused when I move it back, but it's about as far back as it can go before it starts smacking into the ion trap magnet assembly here, so that's not really an option. And uh, I'd mentioned I have the same issue with uh, a sister chassis. It's a 20B1. I'm also uh, been working on a 20A1 behind the scenes. It has exactly the same problem. So, Let's take a closer look at the circuit for this, which is a little odd. The way the current through the focus coil is controlled and derived is a little weird, so I tried to isolate it from the main schematic and simplify it, put on this diagram. So what we're looking at here, this is a focus coil. That's an electromagnet right there. It's got two wires coming out of it. This is a 3K fixed power resistor. That is a 3K wire wound rheostat. Those are located here. There's a 3K fixed power resistor and there is that big guy that's the focus rheostat. Those, the 3K resistor and one side of the focus coil go directly to B plus. Right off the main power supply chassis. The other side of the 3K power resistor is going to one leg of the 3K rheostat. The other leg joints back up with the focus coil. So, these two resistors are in parallel with the focus coil. They join back up and go to two more power resistors and go to ground. That's the 6K, that's the 15K. So things are a little spread out, but that's what it comes down to. So if we forget this side entirely, we just got B plus and then three resistances going to ground. Fixed current. So you might think, well, if we want to vary that, why don't we just put the rheostat in series with this and we're done? They could have, but they didn't. What they did do was... Uh, in parallel to the, to the focus coil, they have the, the, this, which is 6K, except that the wiper feeds this, which is a simplified version of the audio output stage. Yeah, the center tap of this output transformer, which goes to the plates of these two 6K6 tubes, goes to the wiper on the focus control. I'm working on a sister chassis, a 20A1, which uses a little bit simpler output, less uh, power. It uses a single 6V, uh, 6V6. Same deal, or same idea. It's Class A amplifier, and it also gets fed from the wiper, the focus control. In either case, this current is pretty constant, as set by the operating point of the tube. Class A amplifiers are constant current. So that means the current flowing off of this wiper is not going to change. 
So what does that mean when we move this wiper on the rheostat? What it means is, if it's up higher towards this end, more of the current is coming down from the side. If it's more towards the bottom, it's going to get more current going through this way. So it's kind of a, a balanced circuit. You think of like two branches feeding a, a river with a constant amount of water. It's either going to come down one branch or the other. And this is sort of incidental. Um, why they did this exactly, why these two values, voltage divider. This tap is used for part of the audio circuit of all things in the uh, audio IF stages. So, it turns out that I get my best focus when this wiper is all the way at this extreme. Which means we have the least amount of current coming from this because it's going, the B plus is going through the focus coil and through the entire 3K resistance and then down through this side. Which is good because it's easier to decrease the current than to increase it. So, how can we decrease even more the current going through this side? Well, one, we could increase the current going through this side by lowering this resistor from 3K to say 2K. Or we could add a series resistor in here. Or a little bit of both. I don't want to alter things too radically because if I put a big resistor in here it's going to affect the voltage at this point. Uh, I don't want to lower this too much or it's going to affect this circuit a bit. But I want to see, does it even, do I even have this down in my head right? Does this even make sense? So, um, what I thought I, had is I, I could in increase this resistance uh, down in this leg too. I think the simplest thing I could do, or I could add a resistance up here, and that's what I'm thinking of doing, is just breaking this connection here and throwing in like a 500 ohm resistor. I just want to see does that shift things a bit. Um, so we'll still be getting most of the current going through this way and even less of it going through that way. What I'm wondering though is if I add 500 ohms here, do I need to take away 500 ohms on this side to get the right amount of current going down to the audio stage? I don't want to uh, starve this, this thing of current. I mean they chose these values for a reason. Here it is with a 470 ohm resistor put in series with the focus coil and unfortunately if anything it made things worse. So hmm. And yes, we still have arcing in the neck of the CRT occasionally. a close-up of that blue glow in the neck. It's interesting. It's definitely not from gas inside. That's some structure glowing from electrons hitting it. It's curious because when it does spark, that blue glow disappears and the focus comes into sharper. Well, focus. <laughs> Kind of makes me wonder, is there maybe a bad connection in the base? I'm thinking this particular G2, if there's a cathode, that's got to be working or we wouldn't get anything. Uh, and, and the filament, of course, is working. And there's a control grid, which has got to be working, because then otherwise you wouldn't have any contrast. But then there's G2. That's an accelerating anode. It's the only one I could possibly think of that could have an issue where maybe it's not making good contact in the base, but you could still get an image on the screen. Oh, it's weird. Tapping on the neck does, does nothing. I got a comment about rotating the CRT. 
like 180 degrees. Um, that would be, well, it's circular CRT. You can rotate this thing all you want, and the image doesn't, here. The image <laughs> does not change at all, because, well, it's round. And it's the yoke determines the deflection. Um, but his, his thinking was if there was an element in here that had an issue, maybe gravity could help out if you tilted it uh, the right way. Maybe. Also, the thought that the ion trap might affect it, but now the blue glow is uniform no matter. The reason I say that is the ion trap magnet, that's the official term for this, affects the, flow, uh, the direction of the electron beam that's going through the gun. And if you have this misaligned, it can actually send the electron beam crashing into a metallic element inside. Which may be what happened. I mean, because you can see these flecks on the inside of the glass. Uh, I found a really good write-up about how ion traps and the ion trap magnets work. And the damage that can be caused when this is out of position. The electron beam could hit the metallic element inside with enough velocity to actually dislodge the metallic uh, bits and atoms and they get deposited on the neck or even on the face Which is not the same as the ion burn that is a completely different phenomenon Which you absolutely cannot get you cannot get an ion burn If the CRT has an ion trap Because the electron if this magnet wasn't here the electron beam would be shooting off to the side It would not hit the face of the CRT at all the magnet bends it back towards the face is it, you can kind of see there's an angle in there. The electron beam is shooting off at an angle. The magnet bends it back, but the ions still travel out the side of the neck. Anyways. So I got to thinking, adding resistance to the, in series with the field coil really didn't change anything. But what's common between the two sets? Well, I recapped them. And I'm running them a little bit higher voltage than they were originally designed for. Both of those are going to play into the power supply. Modern caps I use, lowest, lower ESR, better caps, better ripple current handling capability than the originals. So B plus is going to be a little bit higher just because of the new caps, I expect. And also a little bit higher line voltage, B plus is going to be a little bit higher. And what does that translate to? The tubes are going to be running a little bit hotter. So these 6K6s are probably drawing a little bit more current, which would mean that this has more current going through it. That's one possibility. However, I just measured the voltage across the cathode resistor. So these use cathode biasing. Both cathodes are tied together and go to a 270 ohm resistor to ground. So current flows through the tube through the cathode to ground, creates a voltage drop across the tube, the, the resistor rather, which puts the cathodes at a positive voltage with respect to ground, which correspondingly means the grids are negative with respect to the cathode. Well, the SAM system should be about 12 and a half volts. Now that definitely varies with the focus control. I got between about 7 volts and 10 volts as I went from one extreme to the other. Which means these are actually drawing less current than Sam said that they would be. Weird. Regardless, one thing I can try doing is increasing that 270 ohm resistor, which should mean these tubes are going to draw less current, which should mean less current going through this. Now it's also possible that I got my math or my circuit analysis wrong, and this actually needs to be drawing more current in which case I can try the opposite and try lowering that resistor and see if I can get this to draw more current. I threw in another 100 ohms to making that 370, so let's see what that does for us. There is also another possibility. That center wiper off the focus goes to a 1500 ohm resistor before going up to the output tubes. 
that's that guy up there. I could th increase that resistance as well. Alright, let's see what this did for us. Hmm. Doesn't seem to have done a whole lot. I just shift it so the focus is a little bit better just off the stop. But it's really not a, as big or as radical a change as I thought it would. So now let's try going the other way. But before I do that, I measured the voltage across these resistors. And actually the focus is the best when there's the least voltage across these. That means we've got the most current going through these tubes. So, I think that is the opposite problem. This does need more current, not less current. Alright, so, let's decrease that resistance. Well, this definitely had a big impact. About 180 ohms. Now there's only about 5 volts by, so these tubes are definitely being driven harder. However, Zero impact on the focus. Still horrible on one side and almost quite right on the other. In other words, nothing I've done has had any impact to any significant extent whatsoever on the focus on the focus control. Alright, let's take another tact. So I've been doing stuff that alters this current, or trying to. And I tried throwing a resistor in here didn't really affect anything. Alright, well, let's forget about that. I can guarantee you that part of the current goes B plus through the focus coil to the 6K to the 15K to ground. Let's tinker with this. So, if my theory is right that it needs more current, let's decrease this resistance. Yeah, some of it will go through here, but definitely some's going through there. I'm going to try measuring this resistance too. I'm just curious what the DC resistance is on that. I think it's low, quite low in comparison to the 6K over here. So what can I do? Well, both of these are readily accessible. Um, I don't want to burn out this coil though by doing something crazy. So let's like say throw uh, maybe a 22K in parallel with the 15K. That'll drop it by um, 40% or so. For those of you playing along at home, the DC resistance of the focus coil is 1.5 kilo ohms. So, 22K resistor tacked across the 15K. Let's see what that does. Okay, that made things worse. Good. There's finally something changed. Cool. That means we can go the other way easily. So in place of that 15K, I'll put the 22K. In other words, let's bump that resistance up. And now with the 22K resistor in place of the 15 And I put the uh, resistor back on the audio. Hmm. Not a huge difference. All right, let's pump it up even more. Alright, now about 33k in the place of that 15k. Mm, not 
nothing dramatic. It might be slightly better off to the side. Hmm. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to decrease the height a bit. Like a the screen should not be this high vertical. I want to get this down a bit because there are usually a couple dashes up top that are a good thing to uh, use to check that the focus is right. That. And it's not in very sharp lane focus. I mean, so you might think the image looks okay, but it should be razor sharp. That's pretty good, but should be better. Just a little bit better, but also I don't like that control being at the extreme end. It occurred to me that most of the current's really going to be flowing down this leg, and this is going to have nowhere near as much impact, so now I'm back to screwing around with this, so... I just went a little bit more extreme and I threw a 2.7k resistor in series with the coil here, which is 1.5k, because I want to see something dramatic. I want to see a big difference. I also did decrease the line voltage going to the set. Got it uh, down to about 115. Uh, that definitely had an impact. So now I want to go all the way clockwise. It's still pretty much in focus. Before we get a really blurry, the image would really shift. Now that effect is significantly minimized. And it has pretty good focus for about a good one third of the turn. Still seems like the best focus is at the extreme counterclockwise. But uh, it's in control, it's not having anywhere near as dramatic a swing as before. Weird. Well, let's keep going. Uh, 2.7k, let's try uh, like 3.9k. Alright, that was going too far. Now the focus control has almost no effect going from one end to the other. So, what is going on here? Well, I think I've got to conclude that this push-pull audio output is drawing too much current. So we're having to force it to have less current go through here and divert more through this path by increasing, artificially increasing the resistance in this. So again, that could happen if B plus is significantly higher than it's supposed to be. Or these tubes are biased such that they're drawing a lot more current than they should be. That's all been recapped and there's shiny new resistors in there. That's the one that sets the bias. We already tried playing around with that. Didn't seem to make a big difference either way. Also, this 1500 ohm resistor plays a major part in that. Um, it's barely warm. I can double check the resistance on that guy and make sure it's correct. All right, getting there, getting there. So, I put everything back the way it was. The bias on the 6K6s, um, the 15 and 6K resistor are back in place. The only thing I've got right now is a, a 3.3K resistor in series with the focus coil. And now the sharpest focus is almost at, on the other extreme, going clockwise. Now you can actually start to see the individual scan lines. Sometimes people prefer it actually being off 
super sharp focus a little bit just because of that because you don't particularly want to see the scan lines but unless you're up real close I don't think it's that big of a, a deal you know when you see lettering it's a pretty obvious thing too anywho Commerce is actually a pretty good test of TV because I got that really harsh lettering usually at the bottom. So you can see it's not quite perfectly in focus. So, oh, and I do have it just plugged right into an outlet now, no variac at all. So it's probably running at like 123 volts or so. So perhaps the ideal value would be 3K. Ooh. <laughs> no, that's another issue now. Damn, that thing, that thing done, done fried up. <laughs> yeah, it used to be orange, orange, red, I do believe, but uh, it is not anymore. And it's got a little bit of smokage coming out of it. So I don't think that was quite big enough wattage resistor. Or did I? Inadvertently, no. If it was a smaller resistor, it wouldn't have gotten hot at all. Huh. And it looked something like this before <laughs> it got fried. So, significant amount of current flowing through there, so if I'm going to put a resistor in there permanently, i got to use a much larger wattage one, which I'm not crazy about doing. So, uh, what I really want to do is figure out what the source of the issue is, and I think it all comes back to the 6K6 bias, two bias on the 6K6 tube. Just like the service info says, if, your focus, if you can't get the focus right, check the audio output stages. I did try swapping the tubes, didn't really seem to do much. Um, considering how, how much trouble I've had with uh, the other transformers, maybe the audio output transformers got an issue. Audio seems clean. I don't really think we got an issue there. Um, and then again, there's that 1.5k resistor that I can uh, tinker with. Well, for now, I came up with a, a simple solution. Rather than burning up resistors by trying to put one in series with the focus coil I decided hey let's make it more attractive to the current to go this way by decreasing this resistance so that 3k resistor down here I threw a 2.7k in parallel with it and what do you know we've got really sharp focus right in the middle of the travel Still curious as to what the real issue is here. So right about there. Some really good focus. Well now, that was a fun little exercise in futility, because I just found the real problem. This very nice looking Omite oh 3K 5 watt resistor is open. I got to wondering about that because when I put this 2.7k in parallel with it, this guy was getting pretty toasty and this was cold. So, <laughs> I don't know if this burned out at some point during the project, maybe because something else was amiss, or was it bad before I put it in? I'm not in the habit of checking quality brand new name brand parts but perhaps this was bad right from the get-go i don't know i hope i've got another one on hand <laughs> or something close because that explains everything uh, 
sort of. Yeah, yeah, sorry, it does. So I was thinking, well, if this is bad, then how could the focus control do anything? But yeah, but all the current was always going through here, down that way, down that. None of it was going down this path. A, a good chunk of the current is supposed to be going this way, and that's why we had too much going through the focus coil. Wow. <laughs> this set is so much fun to work on. Really, uh, really testing my troubleshooting abilities. Uh, but that's a lesson for me. Um, I just assumed the problem had to be esoteric and something weird with biasing of tubes and higher line voltage and this and that. When no, one of the brand new parts that's critical to the operation of this was bad. Simple as that. Well, I'm not sure if I have any more 3K power resistors on hand. I'll keep digging, but for sure I got some 1.5K big beefy ones. I put two of those in power, sorry, in series. That'll give us 3K, plenty of wattage. So, I don't think they'll be burning out anytime soon. And did this take care of all of our troubles? Boy, it sure looks like it did. Yeah, we've got good focus right about in the middle of the control. How about that? Let that be a lesson to you all. Don't overlook the obvious. Maybe the new part you just put in is at fault. Or maybe it was good, but something happened and it burned out while you were working on the set. <sighs> All right.